Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf. Hayaymi Baba Matziah Kuf Zayin. We are holding at the Mishnah, which is on Kuf Baba Matziah, six lines off the bottom. Says the Mishnah, HaMakabil Sadam Echaveri, a fellow committed to cultivate another fellow's farm. So he's a sharecropper, Rashi says. Here we're speaking about a choycheir. So he's meant to um, pay a flat rate, flat fee to the owner, whether it's wheat, barley, money, whatever it is that they made up. Okay, and he's going to work the field and take the crop. Now the thing is, they made up lezora soir. They made up to, uh, that he's going to plant barley. Can he switch to a different crop? No, he's right in the He can't switch to, to wheat. Why, says Rashi? Shachitin makhishay says a karka yeisim in a soirim. Wheat takes more, extracts more nutrients. It wears out the, uh, the field more than barley does. So if it was supposed to be barley, stick to barley. And don't go to wheat. Chitim, but if he allowed him to do wheat, Yisrael and Asoyim, he can switch down to barley. That's beneficial to the owner, right? Rabban Shimon, Ben Gamliel, however, he says, no, Oyser, he can't do that. And then we'll explain why. We have another example of shifting crops. Tvua, if it was meant for grain, lawyers are in a kidneys, he can't switch to beans, which are more demanding of the, of the farm. But if it was kidneys, he can downgrade to, uh, to Tvua, he's in a Tvua. And once again, Vidab and Shimon, Ben Gamliel, Oyser. And the question is why? Omar, who's the Maitaima? Why can't he switch down? If anything, it helps the owner. The Pasuk says, She'eris Yisrael. Kalal Yisrael does not speak falsehood. You, you spoke about one thing, don't switch to something else. We don't speak falsehood. And stick to your word. Here comes a cash. Magbis Purim, if they collected money for... Uh, to, to supply the, uh, the the Purim meal for the poor people, let Purim, make sure it's going to be used for that purpose only. And even if you end up with a lot of money, don't say, well, it's too much for them on Purim. Just give it to them for Purim. Now, on the Ani's side as well, he has to apply it for Purim use. Ve'in Ani mehen the poor fellow can't use any of the money to buy himself a, a shoe strap. Unless he conditioned it, he stipulated it as such in front of the you know, city council. He must use it for Purim and Purim only, because that was the intended purpose of this collection. However, Rabban Shimon, Ben Amlil Mekel, he says he could because look, Rashi says, even though he's, you know, switching designations, Right? But Loisavar the Makbid Inish Midid Le Chasabe says Rashi on the top line. He, uh, we're going with the uh, notion that a person doesn't really, he's not particular about, about something that he, he doesn't have, you know, have any loss from it. So why would the owner care what the owner uses it for? If he has enough of Purim, doesn't he use it for something else? There he goes. So apparently Rabshim Amlil does not consider that to be falsehood and Chazav and Avlon, right? So why back in our Mishnah can't the sharecropper switch crops if it's uh, not going to cost the owner anything? Amr Abaye, I'll give you the reason for uh, this shita. Tamad Ram Shimon, the reason is Kedemar. As our Rebbe said, Rebbe was a Rabbah. Rabbah Bar Nachmeni was the Rebbe of Abaye. He explained like this. Amar, he told us, Haman the Nichale, if a person is not really too concerned about the quality of his farms, the, the titvar, Lashon of Bur, becoming desolate, Arif, he wants to make sure his land becomes desolate, he wants to destroy your property, this is what you do. You wear it out. Lizra'a one year you plant wheat, v'shata sa'iri, then you switch to barley, right? Or shata shasi, one day you plant it going east-west, v'shata erev, the next year it's north-south. If you're not going to be consistent, your field is going to just going to lose itself, uh, right? So same thing here. 
Of course the owner is particular. Of course he shouldn't be switching. He has a reason why he wants this particular crop. Because that's what he was doing. That, that was his... Uh, that was his crop for the last couple of years. You shouldn't be switching on him. Veloy Amaran says the Lord, but you should know this uh, concern only applies, you know, this uh, destruction is, is only true. Eladaloi Karev Vitani. That's only if the, um, if the fellow does not, uh, you know, after he harvests his crop, doesn't plow his field and overturn the soil once and then again. Uh, so he doesn't do that uh, double threat, double, uh, you know, dig. Aval Karev Vitani. But if he plows through his field once and he turns it over and once again, less than more, then there's no concern even if he switched from one type to the other, but apparently this only pertains to the owner. A worker shouldn't be playing around with the owner's field. Tfuol is when a kidness. Mastin lay Rav Yehuda. So Rav Yehuda taught Ravan. Ravan by Rav Nachman, some of Arshim say, which uh, who is mentioned throughout the, uh, the next Ahmed. So he had a different version in the Mishnah. Different Gersa. Tzvua Yisra Anakitness. It's okay to go from um, the intended Tzvua crop to, uh, to switch to Kitness. I'm a lazy. He says, what do you mean? But the, the mission says otherwise. You can't just. Vanantanan Tzvua Lai Yisra Anakitness. I'm a lazy. Le Kashya. says, it depends where you live. Hollan. The uh, farmers in our vicinity, in Bavel, where the land is very uh, moist and it's it's humid and it's moist and it's there's no issue of switching, uh, you know these crops. Meaning it's not going to really wear out the the property. The land is not so delicate and so um, you know susceptible to valahu. Um, but there in Eretz Yisrael, where the land is more dry and it's more, uh, you got to be more careful. And there, when you switch around, you're going to harm. You're going to go from uh, instead of tzvua, you're going to do kidness. Kidness is going to wear out the uh, already. Fragile, uh, you know, soil. In which case, you can't switch up to kitness without permission. Okay, so Agav, we had one discussion between Rabbi Yehuda and Ravin. Here comes, here come another couple between these same Manda Amr. Amr lay Rabbi Yehuda le Ravin bar Ravin, oh, he called him Ravin, my brother. Listen to this interesting Allah I want to tell you. Hani Tachli, Tachli, our, uh, as she says, uh, Christian. They translate it as crest, some sort of um, berry or something, right? The bekisna, which happened to be growing between the flax, uh, you know, uh, plant. It's a flax plantation, so it's really harmful because it siphons off, you know, the nutrients. So if somebody notices them growing in uh, amongst his friend's flax, go ahead and pick it out. There's no issue of stealing. He's more than happy you weed out his, uh, his farm. But let's say you find these on the, uh, along the boundary, so it's sort of not interfering with the, uh, with the main plantation. There, you shouldn't be touching it. If you take it, there's gezel. Now, if you find the, uh, these things growing amongst the flax, but it's already fully developed, so it's already, it's already done its harm, it's done. I feel it to be kitten numb, even if it's in the middle of the flax, uh, there as well, you shouldn't be touching it. There's an issue of Gezel in my time. You know why? Because, look, harm that was done is done. You're not really benefiting the owner by pulling it out and you have no business doing so. My da'afsed, afsed, whatever harm it did, it already did. Amalei Rabbi Yehuda l'Ravin Rav Nachman Ravin Achim my brother Ravin. Hani dili diloch. You know, I have some trees that are really yours. They look like they're mine because they're on my side of the, uh, the boundary but really the roots are um, are, are in your you live next door, right? So your, my roots are inside your property, so really the fruit belongs to you because we always follow the, the roots determine ownership. Some of your trees that look like yours on your side are really mine because of the roots that are on my side. And the Gemara concludes, Nog B'nai Mitzvah, the going practiced amongst uh, you know, uh, neighbors is as follows. Ilan Hanoita Lakan, Lakan, it's all about where the roots are. If the, 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 the tree's roots are going this way, then the tree belongs to him. And the other way belongs to the other fellow. The Itmar, as we learned, you have a tree sitting on the boundary. Right? So it's all about where the roots are. Ushmol Amar Cholkin, he disagrees. He says you split it halfway. Here comes a Kasha on Rav. You have this border tree. Both neighbors split the produce. 
Shift to the Rav. This seems to be a Kasham Rav, who says that the uh, location of the roots d- d- determine ownership. It answers the Gemara, Turgim of Shmuel. So Shmuel came to the rescue. Turgim of Shmuel, leave the Rav. According to Rav, will say that the Brysa, which tells you Yachleiku, is speaking with Mamalei Kolamet Sarkuloi, that the tree is right in the middle of the boundary, and there are some roots going in either direction. That explains why they split it down the middle. Yoch, if that's the case, that's a pretty straightforward situation. Might remember why even discuss it. Of course, they both have equal rights. Let's oh, up. It must be speaking the Tali Tune the Chagisa. That the Tune, the low, the, the, you know, the fruit growing on the tree are leaning totally into Ruben's property. And even there we say Yachleku because of the roots. So it's like, okay, so, but still, if it's all about the roots, who cares where the fruit is? Vakati Mailamemru, why even discuss it? So it's like, well, the more perhaps I would think like this. I understand we do Yachleku, right? But who says we split it lengthwise? In which case, half belongs to you and half belongs to me. Let's split it widthwise. In which case, it's all, it's all on my side, right? So, again, you have this tree on the boundary, right? Leaning totally into Ruben's property, but the roots are on both sides. So, okay, we say Achleku. Who says we go this way, right? In which case, he'll get half, he'll get half. Maybe we go this way, right? And the, since the fruit is totally on Ruben's side, he'll get everything. Maybe go this way. Kamashman, the answer is no. The Amalei. His opponent will say, no, my chazas the palgasachi. Who says he cut it this way? Plagachi, split it the other way. And that's the point of the Braissa. We say, Achleiku. Amalei, Rabbi Yehuda, once again, the Ravin Barav Nachman. Ravin Achim, my brother Ravin. I want to give you some good uh, real estate advice. Never buy a property which is right near the city, which is exposed to public view. Why? Ayin hara, dama ravo, amar avhuna, amar rav, osloi la'adam. Shiyamad al sadei chaveroi b'sha shayimedes b'kham A person must be careful not to position himself right next to his, his uh, friend's fully grown, uh, you know, field, fully grown crop, because it can generate jealousy and ayin hara, it can harm him. And that's why we want the uh, property ideally to be at a distance from the city. Any is that true? That it's better to be far away than closer? Ashkechin, whoever story. Rab Abba encountered the Tamid of the Rab, the Tamid of Rab. Amar Luni asked him a question. My Amar Rab Bani Kroyu. Could you please tell me how Rab explained the following psukim in the Dvarim? Right? Baruch Ata Ba Iru, Baruch Ata Ba Sada, Baruch Ata Ba Ba Yecha, Baruch Ata Ba Tesecha. What did Rab have to say about this pasuk? Amar Luni, and they responded. This is what he said. Hachi Amar Rab. Baruch Ata Ba Iru means you should have a bracha in the city. You should live right next to the shul. Okay, so you feel connected to the shul, great. You should have blessing out in the field. Your business should be right, right, right near your house. You have a short commute. So your sada should be right, right there. Apparently we see it's advantageous to have a field close by. Okay, let's finish up. What does that mean? When you return, you come back, it should be all good. You shouldn't encounter your wife in a uncertain state of, of nida, which makes it very difficult, very challenging. When you return home from a trip. And finally, your offspring should be blessed. You should have children just like you with all the great uh, qualities. So that was Rav's interpretation. Vamalu and Rabbi Abba responded to the Talmudim of Rav who gave him this presentation. You should know Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan, however, had a different approach to the Pasuk. Ella, rather, he learned like this. Baruch Atabayir means, So the outhouse should be near your, uh, your table, near your kitchen, near your house. It should make it convenient for you to use. But actually, having a shul nearby is not a mile, it's not an, not an advantage. You know why? Because Rabbi Yechon follows his view, the Amar, who says like this, The longer you walk to shul, the more schar you get. It reminds me of a story of Moshe Feinstein just switched apartments. And he was, uh, he was all happy, he was joyous. Talmud asked him, Rosh Hashiva, I mean, is this apartment so much better than the other one? I mean, like, what's the big uh, celebration? So Rabbi Yechon says, no, 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 an apartment, it's an apartment, like any, that's not the issue. The point is, because this one is further away from the yeshiva, from Mesifta Tveris Yushalayim, 
and it's going to require more walking, which will give me more schar, schar pasiyas, just like Rabbi Yechon and the Gemara, schar pasiyas says. Baruch Ata Basotecha, what does that mean? Sheyu Nechasecha Mishaloshim. She have bracha on your investments. She have a diversified portfolio. Shlish Betzvua, third of your investments should be in grain, Shlish Bezeisim, third in olives, Shlish Bekfanim, third in, in uh, grapes. This way you balance it out and you're safer. And Baruch Ata Bavayecha means, Baruch Ata Basotecha means like this. We connect the two points. Bavayecha, we connect it to Betzisecha. That when you leave the world, B'tzisecha means when a person departs from this world, when a person departs the world, he should be on the same, at least on the same status, on the same level as when he entered, when he was born. Just as when he entered, he was free of any sin, likewise when he leaves the world. The bottom line, we see that at least according to the uh, Talmudim of Rab, according to Rab, that it's good to have a field close to the city, even though it's exposed to public view. And Rav, a minute ago, told us, no, 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 it's a, it's, it's a problem to have people standing around. There's an issue of Ayn Hara. How do we reconcile? It says in Molay Kasha, it depends if it's protected from view. How the Mahadali Shura Veriska, when it's surrounded with a wall and a fence on top, beautiful, totally protected, totally private. No issue there. So there, close proximity is an advantage. It's not surrounded, not protected from you, then it's better to be far out of, uh, you know, eyesight. Okay, on the topic of Rav with Ein Hura, here comes another Pasuk. We'll remove from you all sicknesses. We're speaking about a root, the root of sicknesses. Amar Rav, what is that? What generates illnesses? Jealousy, Ein Hura. That is something which causes many, many illnesses. And we have a story, Rav Tamei, Rav follows his opinion because Rav, the Rav Salak Lubei Kibri, Rav, Rav once entered the Beis Akvaris, Ovid, my dear Ovid, he did something, he said some sort of chant, some sort of lachash, and he um, was able to discern the, the source, the, the root, the cause of death. Omar, he said like this, Tishim v'tishim v'ainar, you should know, out of 100 uh, people, uh, Kvarim, 99 were caused through the Ayn Hara. Their illnesses were generated through, were triggered through Ayn Hara, of Echad, Berch Eretz, only one died naturally. Well, Shmuel Amar Shmuel disagrees. He says, what's mean? What does Kol Chayli mean? What is the thing that sort of triggers lots of illnesses? The Ruach, wind, maybe you know, bacteria in the air, whatever. Shmuel Tamei. Shmuel follows his opinion. Amar Shmuel, Kol Beruach. All illnesses and, 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 and uh, cause death are because of ruach, different types of uh, winds that are blowing throughout the day and affect different people different ways. L'shmol, he called Rugi Malchus. How could Shmol say it's all because of ruach? What about those that were killed by the authorities uh, with a sword? I mean, that's not wind-related. Says the word, no, Hanach even those fellows, he loved Zikov, not for the ruach aspect. Avdi Lusam of Achayim can use a strong uh, agent, a medicine of some sort, and put them back together and make them live. Arachanina Amar Zutzina. He says, what is the root cause for many illnesses? Tzina, that's uh, the, the, you know, cold. The, the, uh, the cold temperature, the, the, uh, and, the, and the whatever it you know, brings along with it. Damar Khanina, Shavonina, tells us that's something to be very careful of. HaKobe Deshemayim, you should know all happenances, all incidents are dictated in heaven and brought upon a person. Chutz mitzinim pacham, except for difficulty which is caused through uh, cold and heat. Meaning, a person has the ability to protect himself, to insulate himself from, you know, uh, extreme temperatures. Shanem atzinim pachem b'derech ikesh, a stubborn person, gets involved in cold and hot, meaning, shoyber nafshi chikmehem, a person who's careful and conscientious, should be careful and protect himself, uh, you know, dress well in the winter, and don't overheat in the summer. So even this, which comes through a person's own doing, even that, Hashem promises to protect him and to remove that from him as well. It's referring to uh, personal waste. The one in the, through the, um, the nose and the ears. Ruben Kasha. Uh, too much of it is harmful to the person. But a bit, a bit is good. And that's what the Pasuk is speaking about. Protecting a person from the effect of this uh, waste. It's referring to a person's um, uh, gall, bile. Tanya we find the Ebrisa as well that attributes many illnesses to the Mara, Machla, 
When it says machlu zumara, that's the mora of elomenik nashma machlu. Why is it referred to in this negative term? She machalik al gufish adam. It creates a lot of illnesses. Ach, another reason. Machla. Machla is actually uh, numerically it's it's eighty three, right? Mem ches lamate she shmoinim ushloisha chaloim tulin b'mara. The connection between uh, mara and illnesses is because the word machla is eighty three. 83 different types of issues that the mother can trigger. And you should know Vakulam. They can all be countered. And uh, a person could immunize, immunize himself, protect himself from these illnesses because uh, he'll have a good breakfast. Pas Shachris, Bemelach, has a good healthy breakfast, bread with salt, Kitan Shamayim, a jug of water, Mibat Lassan, has the ability to nullify, to cancel out, and protect him from all these illnesses. On the topic of breakfast, Yud Gimel. Dvarim Nemru Pashachris, there are 13 uh, points to breakfast. 13, you know, things uh, that, that, it, um, that it can do to a person. Matzalas Menachama protects him from the heat, Menachina from cold, Menachikin from strong winds, Menachikin from the uh, evil spirits, Machimas Pesi. It makes him smart, it makes him wise. He has the ability to focus and concentrate. Vizecha Bedin. He has the ability to present his case well in the Besden and can win his cases through that. Who Matera Lamiter to learn and to teach. Udvar Nishmaim, he's articulate, he's convincing to people, Vatamuda Miskayim, and he retains his learning. Skaim Biyodoy. Vain Basarim Alehevel, he doesn't sweat much. Viniskakli Ishtoy, he desires his wife, and Misavad Shacharis, and avoids being involved with other women. Varegas Kina, Shivunay Ma'ayim. And it. Um, it, it uh, obliterates the uh, any, any intestinal worms. Some say it cancels any jealousy. It makes him in a good disposition. Uh, uh, and generates love for people in his heart. He's all all around a good fellow. Puts him in a good state of mind. Good to have some breakfast. Let's look for a, a source for the common. Uh, you know, phrase that people use. She and Rahiti wrote to all 12, uh, 60, 60 runners chasing Vilaymatu Lagarva. They couldn't catch up to this fellow, the Mitzafra Karach, who had a good breakfast. All right, who had bread in the morning. So let's look for the source of this concept. And likewise, we have a, uh, an expression said by the Chachamim as well. If it's summertime, get up early to have your breakfast. Ne'achamah to protect you from heat. Ubechayev in the wintertime. Ne'atzinah to protect you from cold. Where do we find that breakfast is so vital and so important and enhances a person's life to this extent? Amalei says, "Perfect. I'll bring you a ride from a pasuk that says, 'Lo yirav v'leitzmo v'loyakim shera v'shemesh.' I'll be protected from all issues. Loyakim shera v'shemesh. So the drush is like this: they will not be struck by the elements. Kivon de lo yirav v'loyitzmo. So the pasuk is meant to be read sort of as a reason." If a person is careful not to keep himself hungry or thirsty, then he'll be protected from the elements, he'll be insulated from all these issues. Amalei, he says, At Oh, you found the Pasuk over there, which is in Yeshayi. I'll find your Pasuk closer by in Chumash. Right? They'll serve Hashem. Then you sit down to breakfast. What is that going on? So Kriyashma Tfilah. After you die, when you sit down to breakfast, will give you blessing and your food. Bread and salt, jug of water. So once you're through that, you fed your soul, you fed your body. Now going forward, you're protected. From illnesses. Okay, Rehuda instructed Rav Adah, who was a surveyor. Be careful. Don't take it lightly. When you measure up properties, every inch counts. The chopurto, purto, every little bit. You can plant in it this um, saffron, this uh, expensive uh, garden saffron variety, which is expensive, and uh, it's not fair to deprive people of their uh, inches of property. Here comes some more instruction to the same fellow. Dalad Amis, it wasn't a fellow, Rav Adam. Rav Adam Dalad Damis, that was his uh, Parnassah. He uh, surveyed the properties and they would leave over some four Amis near the uh, tributaries, near the uh, you know, uh, irrigation canals to allow access, allow for, uh, to protect the canals from collapsing, right? They couldn't plant near, 
near the uh, actual near the water. So when he was measuring up the four amis, dal amis da nigra, which uh, served the local farmers, zalzabul. You don't have to really take it so seriously. Just um, you know, do whatever you think is. Uh, uh, you know, you know, it doesn't have to be overdone. Well, even less than four amis, it can be you know tight. It's okay. Danhara, but when you measure up the four amis near the large river, which is accessed by all, you know, the ship uh, carriers, they used to actually pull ropes, right? That's how they didn't have the you know motorized ships, so they used to have people on both sides of the river pulling the uh, the ship with ropes. So you need some space for that. So those shipping lanes have to be measured properly. You shouldn't even measure it. Just uh, take a look and see what's necessary. If it's four, a bit more than four, and mark it as a shipping lane. Why? Why there's a difference between these two lanes? Rabbi is going with his sheet. Rabbi the Arba Amis da Nigra live near Nigra. The uh, four Amis strip near the uh, irrigation ditches is meant for the local farmers. So according to Taisa, you don't need uh, such a big area. Danhara, but the ones near the river, the Kuliyama, the Kuliyama is meant for the public, so you need a bigger space for them. Machr is Rabbi Ami. So we speak about leaving, you know, uh, empty areas along the river to allow for the uh, shippers. Maloi Kantfi Nagdi. So the Nagdi are these, uh, you know, rope, uh, you know, pullers. So you have to leave. Maloi uh, Kantfi, the shoulder width, worth. Of the uh, of the rope pullers, betray even Nahara on both sides of the river. Koitsu. So that much space, koitsu, you have to chop the trees away. That was the uh, local, you know, bylaw. That was the policy. Rabnasim Raisha cuts Shitsu Amasa. He went further. He knocked off 16 Amis to clear out a 16 Amis swath of of shipping lane. Also, Lebne Mashroinia. So the people of Bnei Mashroinia, the local people, were very upset that he chopped off so much of their forest. They knew they hit him. Now, who saw a Rabbim? He thought there was like a, a shear of a Rishis Rabbim, which could learn about the Basra of Hashem, that's 16 Amis. Well, it's incorrect. Over there, you have people coming and going, milling around, lots of traffic, you need 16 Amis. Here's just uh, for the, uh, you know, the, the rope guys. It's enough to provide them, just, you know, enough for them to, uh, Rashi says, actually, they would lean away from the river as they're pulling the ropes to maintain their balance. Basically, that's how much space you need. Rabbi Bar Huna, there was a story with him, Havali Abba. He had a forest, Aguda Danara, on the riverbank. Amrulay Naked's Mars. The people, you know, the city inspectors came by and said, okay, it's time to chop some of your trees off to allow for that chipping lane. Amrulay, he says, look, see, he was situated mid river. So he says, look, first have the people upriver, upstream, and downstream cut. Right, koitsu iloi, the up ones, and the ones below me, and then I'll go and chop my trees to complete that lane. Asks the Gemara, why do you do it? How can you do this? He's, he's meant to show example, right? He's meant to. Uh, we learn, the Rosh is kshoit atzma. First fix yourself up, and then afterwards, set other people straight, kshoit achirim. So how could he. Uh, uh, wait for the others. Do it first. He should have led by example. Answers the Gemara. No, no, no. It was a special situation. Hasam there. Abba, the forest, the beparzak refila Abba. It would belong to this family, the uh, vice president's family. The beparzak refila. Parzak, that was his name, or something. It was. It was uh, basically a, um, a via, part of the you know the royal family, right? And they were difficult people to deal with. They weren't cooperative. And he knew that they're not going to chop off their trees. So what's the point? In any case, the fellow's going to have to go on the other side of the river. This side is blocked off. Right? He lived mid-river, midstream. And if the upstream section is still going to be blocking, and the same with the downstream, what's the point of just him chopping his tree in the middle? Right? But he figured, right? The people have, but he figured the kites, so if they chop their trees, fine, great. So we'll open up the lane. Kayatsna, I'll do mine as well. Viloy kaitsu, if they don't do it, I'm my echo. What's the point of chopping my tree? It's pointless. Because if they are able to um, to get their, uh, their 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 ropes across, then they'll be able to pass through the whole the whole riverbank. Viloy, but otherwise, loy mistagal, they won't be able to pass anyways. So basically what he was saying was they're going to have to skip over to the other side of the river when they get to this section. What's the point of me cutting my tree? I'm not going to come back to my section and go back across. So, let's wait. If the other ones cooperate, sure, 
I will do mine as well. Okay, so we started with the Mishnah. One may not switch to a, a type of uh, crop which is more strenuous on the, uh, on the property, but he can uh, drop down to a, a lesser strenuous type. A contemption well, you can't. And explain because messing up the, uh, you know, the crop pattern is uh, detrimental to the field. Uh, we learned about how to deal with a, a tree sitting on a, at a boundary, uh, whether it's about the roots or do you say, you know, yachleiku. So, um, right? Then we have a discussion about Ayin Hura and how to explain the Pesukim, Baruch Atabair, etc. The Sechar Halicha to the Beis HaKnesses. We discussed the, um, the greatness of Pas Shachras, of having a good, hearty, healthy breakfast that protects from everything, everything. Ruchnias and Gashmas. We concluded with some instructions provided by Yehuda to Rav Adam Shachar, uh, the uh, surveyor. All the best to you and Atzlach Rav.